Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez back again. It's a nice chilly day outside. And as you can see behind me, we have the 8550 back on the front of the table here because now we're going to concentrate back on that printer that, you know, we've been kind of ignoring since I got the continuous system for the Pro 100. Well, the Pro 100 right now is in a state of limbo. I did receive the print head right there in the box and I have an extra one underneath it. The one underneath is the one that comes with the uh, actual printer so it does not come in a box. And I was able to get a new one for about $196 so that's not too bad. Um, anyway, so since that's going to be on the back burner at this point, we're going to go ahead and concentrate on several videos basically going back to the 8550 which is a very very capable printer that one that i recommend for anyone who is interested in all sorts of aspects of printing not only can it print beautiful photos with even a limited ink palette it can actually perform very very well i, I compare it to some of my other much more higher end printers you almost cannot discern the difference between both outputs Assuming, of course, you have everything set correctly and are using a nice custom profile. That's always important, even though we are using OEM inks. As long as we use OEM inks and Epson papers on that Epson printer, you should get very good results. The same thing goes for any other paper manufacturer that provides you with profiles that were made on that printer with the OEM inks. So we have here the empties. I was able to refill the matte black, not matte black, but the pigment black bottle with PC inks. These are the PCK3 HDSE Signature Edition matte black. So now we have matte black. I don't know whether the other one that comes with it is actually a matte black or just simply a pigment black. That could be a glossy black. We do not know if that is the case. So I decided to go ahead and top off the original bottle. It will fit perfectly in there again when I need to top off my black pigment ink tank. So we are set for that. We have a full set of the color inks. Again, this was donated by a very generous viewer. So we're gonna put that to use as soon as I need to. As I need to, I will add those extra colors they automatically stop feeding ink so there's no danger of overflowing your tanks so you can go like maybe you're halfway down and you want to just top off just because you want to you can insert the bottle whatever the amount of ink required will trickle in and it will stop it will not overflow all right so we're going to be covering in the next week or so i have a bunch of video topics that i'm going to be creating probably today and then we'll schedule them every day why is an epson eco tank i'm reading off of here the ideal printer for both everyday printing as well as photo printing you see it also has a scanner and you can actually print on printable discs as well so cds dvds if you do that sort of thing still you can accomplish that here all you need is the cd printing software and you're ready to go it does a very good job now document printing so quick you just cannot believe how fast it prints documents on just regular quality the normal quality it's amazing what about copies you can directly copy put whatever you want to copy in the scanner and go directly to the screen you don't even have to use the driver Everything is done on the screen. All of these operations can be handled directly on the screen, including nozzle checks, including cleaning cycles, if you need to do them, all of that. And keep in mind that the most important thing, that's why people who get these printers are in love with them, no chips, no chips whatsoever. You could load Kool-Aid if you wanted to on those bottles, 
Of course, I don't recommend you do that. But, you know, you get what I mean. You're not restricted at all to either using original inks, which will run you. I think that set minus the pigment black bottle will run you about $85. And it has 70 milliliters of ink per bottle, which is quite a lot. You're going to save a ton of money and still be able to print with OEM inks. I wish they would do that with other printer models out there. Mm. Uh, but you know better than that. Anyway, there are also other options. If you want to go third party, even cheaper, you could get as slow as $35, a full set of five bottles of third party inks. Of course, they claim that they are as well matched to OEM as, you know, of course they do. Uh, it's only after you install them. And just like the Pro 1000, that ink has to go through the internal ink delivery system to the printhead. And then finally, you will see the results of whatever ink you choose to use. So I recommend you stick with original OEM inks as they are not ridiculously expensive like most other models are. All right. How to properly create a paper profile on the ET8550 with the X-Rite 1 Pro 2 software? I'm going to demonstrate that. But also, I'm going to show you how to print a chart that you can export out of the software or you can download from my Facebook group and just print it using QImage. QImage has an option for printing color charts. But I will show you how to do that because there's some settings, specific ones that you have to set correctly in order to be able to, for instance, print your charts that you generate inside the x software correctly okay with no color management we're going to print on the 8550 in fact i did that yesterday with watercolor paper just regular old watercolor paper you buy at your local michaels or any art supply store of course you're going to need a profile i will provide that profile for you online on my facebook group you download it and as long as you're using canson watercolor paper you will be able to get some very interesting results. I also recommend that the finished product is sprayed. Where did I put that? Back there. This type of spray is intended for drawings and charcoal type drawings. And even uh, when you paint with watercolor, it will protect the surface so that your dyes don't succumb to ozone and watercolor paints are actually pigment based but they also may contain the cheaper ones that you buy out there may also contain dye so you don't want any fading of your masterpieces so you're going to spray them with this give them a good coat it will dry fairly matte it will not really affect the look of your finished print but it will protect it and in some cases yes it does affect it but in a positive manner it will actually darken your darkest areas which are gonna not be as dark as on regular ink jet coated paper okay you might be disappointed in that but it's just you look for a special look and i'll show you what i was able to get real quick here i did yesterday a print on enhanced matte using the epson profile and then i printed on the canson watercolor paper again a non ink jet coated paper okay it really works and the detail i expected it to be more of a like a blotter effect where fine detail will just kind of ooze away no i had incredible quality as far as detail goes let me show you first the properly done one on matte paper from epson And here it is. As you can see, it is a beauty. And the detail, my camera is terrible, so I cannot really get up close to give you a shot of the detail on those trees. I have an extra sheet underneath here. But this is what I got with the watercolor paper. I'll bring that over so that we can compare it. So you get a pretty good idea what the pigment black does it produces a relatively nice deep black and that 
actually it's not black on the actual image if you measure it it's something like 15 15 15 or something like that it's not quite zero 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 so notice that the foreground right here is a little bit lighter but look at the color matching it's pretty much identical so this is that thick very texture watercolor paper certain images certain images that do not contain maybe they are pastel mostly in the tonality will print gorgeous on this i did some family portraits of my daughter's husband's side of the family and printed it on that actually i did it on a uh, 18 by 24 sheet of that same paper amazing it came out so beautiful and i did that on another printer this was a pigment printer i did it on the pro 1000 it does add a little extra because i think the matte black uh is actually pretty strong so anyway that is it for that so we're going to be doing a lot more i did a profile like i said here's the chart let me take it out of my holder here so there's the chart from which i created that profile from and again like i said i'll make that available so any of you who want to explore this and again remember folks it's not going to look as it would look on watercolor paper with an inkjet coating it's going to be more subdued it might look dull to you but that's you're looking for that look and then when you spray it it will sort of strengthen the results a little bit it'll actually increase the dynamic range and make everything pop a little bit more all right so we will also be printing on canvas who would have thought? I think Keith Cooper did that on one of his videos. He did a multitude of videos on the 8550. But I'm going to go ahead and try it. I have some nameless canvas media for inkjet printing. It's matte, so I'm going to test the capabilities of that matte ink pigment black. We don't know if it's matte. We'll have to see and see how it does. I'm also going to be doing a panorama on it. So what I need to do is go back and we'll trim a piece, maybe, I don't know, 37 inches long and we'll load it. We'll create a custom size and we will print a stitched image composed of several images. We'll see what we can get. All right. That should be very, very interesting. I'll, I'll make sure that I use something like a luster type paper so I can take advantage of that richness of those dye inks. Also, when should I choose to use non-OEM inks? Now, like I said, because of the relatively low cost of the real McCoy here, uh, we're going to check to see what's available out there and why would you want to switch over to a cheaper, much cheaper actually, version of those inks. Now, Precision Colors at this point is not interested in producing any dye inks for that printer. They are going to probably concentrate on what they're currently working with which is a full pigment ink set the problem with that is that it can then produce basically a bit of gloss differential when you are printing on non-matte media because this has no gloss optimizer or chroma optimizer like the canon printers do which helps to diminish or at least eliminate in some cases that gloss differential so that, that's, that's something that you have to um, basically decide if you're going to be doing only matte media printing, then go ahead and initiate your 8550 with nothing but pigment-based inks. And it has the ink set already formulated for it. So if you're into that sort of thing, no glossy, no luster, no satin, then go that route. What are the options for ET8550? maintenance cartridge this printer has a user replaceable maintenance cartridge and that really brings it way above most other printers because other printers rely on internal ink pads if you have epsons some of them are resettable some of them are not in other words some of them even allow you to divert the tube that actually delivers the waste ink generated to the internal pads you can divert it outside and collect your ink in a bottle 
That way your past never really becomes saturated. So at the point where it theoretically becomes saturated by a very high count, you can reset that to zero and then continue printing because you know you're not really saturating your pads. Well, in this case, we have an internal cartridge that collects that waste ink. Now, what it does is has a chip and it goes from empty to what it considers to be full. Change me now, in other words. Well, really, it's not really that full. It's kind of prematurely reporting that it's saturated when it really is not. We're gonna be running experiments. I promised to do this in the past, but now I'm gonna finally do that. You gotta remember that I have so many printers and I gotta cover every one of them. So this whole week is gonna be dedicated to this printer. We're gonna put it through its spaces again. By the way, I hadn't used it for, gosh, I don't know how long. Perfect. Not a single problem. It started right up and it printed right away. Although I did do a pre-print nozzle check. It was perfect, so without any kind of hassles. So anyway, going back to the maintenance cartridges, normally what you do when it is declared full, you remove it, you open up the printer, not, not the scanner lid, but the printer lid, and remove the cartridge, and then replace it with a brand new one. Now, Rick Johnson offers everything you need to be able to refurbish your original cartridge. Also, he sells third-party versions, which are just as good. He also sells chips if you just want to change a chip or reset the original chip back up to empty. You could put it back in. You could probably get a full cycle again without really physically saturating that sponge. Or you can remove the lid, remove the innards, toss them away, and then put clean ones, put the lid back on it. All of it is available on his eBay store. He also offers the same type of material or goods for the Epson XP 15,000s and also I believe the Canon M620, which is a similar type printer, sort of like an eco tank type printer. So that is it. That's gonna cover everything. Now we're gonna to attempt to do all of this, cover all of this on the upcoming Sunday live stream but there will be individual videos created as well for all of those subjects. How many? Seven different subjects. So there'll be seven videos. And again, drop by on Sunday and I will be again, dedicating the whole show to that puppy right there. Okay. Like I said, probably the best choice, general use printer you will ever acquire. Why was I so excited about the Pro 100 with a SIS unit? Because technically speaking, you can then, you know, disable every chip as they reach empty and continue printing. It will be a chipless Canon printer. You see what I mean? So that, that sort of did uh, resound in my head as being a good option. But the truth of the matter is that it is difficult to install. For some people, it's easy. For me, it was very easy. Some others, it might be a little bit more difficult to install, you know. And after that, then you're basically stuck with a printer with the lid half open and that sort of thing. But again, you're feeding ink externally and you can literally with your eyeballs watch how much ink you have left. Once all your chips are disabled, that's it. You're running chipless, just like I'm running chipless on my Pro 1000 at this moment. Okay, so that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this. You saw what I could do with that. Okay, and if you go back to my 8550 playlist, you will see what I have previously done. We're going to go ahead and do some more type of work. I'm going to test that out, doing some other functionalities and see exactly how versatile that puppy is. Now, it currently sells for under $800. And again, hopefully, Epson will be selling so many of these units. Apparently, they cannot even keep them for more than five minutes at the stores they just fly off the shelves so maybe they will then take that and maybe on a 17 inch capacity printer they will add an eco tank type feature where you will be filling external tanks now yeah that's going to sort of throw a monkey wrench into the expensive photo uh, printing models that use pigment inks 
again remember dye inks and they'll probably keep it at the six ink level that's only really five inks because you're doubling the blacks all right again a lot of dreaming to do hopefully that will happen it would be fantastic to have a 17 inch version of that baby right there and be able to you know print in much larger type media all right thank you so much we will see you back again soon don't forget to subscribe share and like and until the next time happy printing everyone and bye bye